Hey everyone, Gil Gross here, and it is time for another mailbag where I answer your inquiries, your comments, your questions about tennis and anything else, except not this week, because this week I gave you a theme. Did this last time, I said, who are your favorite players, who are your least favorite players, and I responded to your comments. This week, I've asked you, what are the most underrated shots in tennis? Shots that are excellent, they are fantastic, but nobody ever pays any attention, nobody gives them the love that they deserve, or they are low-key in some sort of way, because, uh, you know, the whole, people aren't talking about thing. How do you really measure how much someone is talking about things? Anyway, uh, let us begin. I should be able to kind of, this can be a shorter mailbag. Um, I took 15 of your comments and uh, should be able to get through all of them. Well, all of the ones that I selected, I should say. Okay, uh, let's start with JJ. Let me start by saying that the clear answer is Francisco Serendolo's forehand, but that's too easy. I feel like Sinego's forehand drop shot is sneakily one of the best weapons on any given court. I'd also like to mention Ketsmanovic's serve. feel like we're not talking enough about how much credit goes to his serve for his improvement this year. All right, first of all, the first one isn't that obvious, but I'm really glad it's in here because to me, the main headline from the post-Wimbledon clay, uh, besides, I would say, Sinner's significant victory over Alcaraz, which I covered on the uh, previous edition of Monday Match Analysis, so uh, please do check that out if you haven't. Uh, the, the main headline before that was the play of Francisco Serendolo in Bostad, winning his first career title, beating Casper Ruud, beating actually crushing Pablo Carreño Busta and handling really easily in the final Sebastian Baez, who's been a fantastic player on clay all season. Then, very next week in Hamburg, beats Andre Rublev, beats Aslan Karatsev again, loses to uh, Musetti in the semifinal there, a lot of tennis in the two weeks. Um, and I watched a lot of those matches, called a lot of them in Bostad, and I was like, whoa, I've seen enough. This forehand is easily top 10 in men's tennis. It is. It is filthy good. So I'm really glad that's here. I agree. Sinego's forehand drop shot. Excellent choice. Katsmanovic's serve. I don't know that I agree that it's underrated, but I agree with the premise of what JJ says here, which is that, yes, it, it is uh, certainly a, a big credit to his improvement goes to his serve, which is now, I would say, elevated to a level that is average, maybe slightly above average at, at his height, certainly. I th I'd say it's average. Um, and by the way, he's not tall, so let me be clear about what I'm saying. He's not very tall, so you know, it's going to be hard for him to have a great serve, but I, I would say in the overall landscape of serves, it's it's somewhat average. But yeah, uh, it used to be below average, and it is a big reason for his improvement that it is uh, a lot better this year. And and uh, next time I watch Ketsmanovic, I'll take a look. Maybe I'll adjust my thinking on his serve, but right now I feel like it's it's average. But yes, it's it's much better. Cross-court tennis. The Chilich backhand is ridiculous when firing, like a bullet and can go uh, each direction with depth. So much intensity in each stroke. I agree. Uh, I, you know, on the underrated factor, right? Like, do people, don't people appreciate Chilich's backhand? I feel like they do. Uh, but yes, it is, it is really a uh, fantastically potent backhand. One of the most potent in the sport. And uh, it is... Steadier than his forehand also from Angelos. Djokovic serve is for sure the most underrated shot in tennis. His accuracy in spot serving is as good as anyone's right now. I told all of you guys about how I tweeted uh, the clip uh, from the podcast where I basically said Djokovic isn't bad at anything. And then I read Twitter people responding and like a lot of the responses made me cringe and uh the first one that i i kept seeing was drop shot and i had a big rant i feel like I, I don't know what video it was but i ranted about how djokovic's drop shot is definitely not a weakness and uh 
A lot of people were still saying serve. And they're, I mean, they're literally stuck in a previous era if you're saying that Djokovic's serve is a weakness. So, uh, yeah, I think maybe it is underrated. Now, I, I do think that it has gotten plenty of love from everyone who kind of knows what they're talking about since, uh, since really Goran came into play and had him kind of going bigger. But, but yeah, Novak's serve is, is good. It's very good. And, uh, maybe, maybe underrated by some. Wadis. Uh, I never hear any talk about Giron or Fritz's backhand. I feel like most of the time in American tennis, the backhand is very overlooked and we rely on the serve much more, especially recently. They both look like they unleash on the backhand. I don't know if I'm with you on Giron, but I'm definitely with you on, on Fritz. Um, I'm, I'm with you on the Fritz backhand. The Fritz backhand is phenomenal. It is the shot that has never been the problem for him. Like, I think a lot of things in his career have have changed. He's gotten more athletic. His his forehand, the mentality has improved where he's starting to really rip it and go after it instead of being too passive on the forehand, uh, which is how he spent his the early stages of his career. Uh, his serve has gotten way, way bigger. Uh, the backhand has always been there for him. You know, it's it's been his his reliable friend the whole way, the whole way. And then in terms of like American tennis being serve and forehand centric, it I feel like it's starting to change. Like Brooksby's backhand is phenomenal. Korda's backhand is phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal. Nakashima's backhand is tremendous. So that whole group is actually comparatively a backhand centric group, which is interesting to see. I don't know. I guess there was a group of players. You know, there are certainly many that come to mind. Uh, Query, Isner. Um, by the way, Opelka's backhand centric. Um, you know, Stevie Johnson certainly, and Roddick. Roddick is a big one, right? So, so yeah, there there were definitely a lot of uh, backhands holding back American players from JA. Isner's aggressive return. Dimitrov's backhand flick when the contact point is behind his body and Gofan's short angle cross court forehands, which I think he uses a lot. I I love the Isner pick because a lot of people will just blanket his return as a weakness, but it's actually his return of serve that turned him into a top 10 player when he achieved those heights. And I know that sounds crazy, but I think it's true. It's not the first serve return, but it's how he started handling second serve returns, which was uh, a major, which, which enabled him to make a major leap in his career because he always served massive. The difference when Isner cracked the top 10 in, I believe, 2018, if I'm mistaken, then 2019, um, when, when Isner did that, it was because he was breaking serve more and doing so because he found a way to just crack forehands, uh, whenever he had the opportunity. And that included the second serve return, which he started to play, <clears throat> um, very, very aggressively. Uh, Dimitrov's backhand flick when the contact point is behind his body. I do think he has more strength in his wrist from desperate situations than anyone outside of team 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 has it but Dimitrov I think is even more of a, a a desperation shot maker on his backhand side uh maybe even more so than team so uh yeah I I agree that that is a shot that you know we we rarely see when when we do get to see it it's phenomenal Underrated, I don't know, because whenever Dimitrov pulls that off, it's obviously on every highlight reel on all the social media accounts. But but sure, a good shout. And uh, Gafan short angle cross-court forehand. Well, 
he doesn't have a lot of pop on his forehand, so he really does rely on moving the ball around the court. And uh, I, I think you're right. Uh, Gafan's cross-court forehand angle is a, a reliable tool that he uses. He does dump more forehands in the net than I feel like most players as a result because I think sometimes he's he kind of rolls over the ball. And uh, I, I have noticed that sometimes compared to other players, he's uh, kind of dumping forehands into the net more often. From Alex, FAA's serve doesn't get enough recognition in my opinion. Also, Berrettini's two-handed backhand, while it's clearly weaker than his serve and his forehand, it's a steady shot, and I don't think it deserves the hate it gets from some people. Well, I agree with the first one. FAA serve. FAA serve, I've been on this. There's only uh, seven serves that I think are better than Felix's uh, serve. First serve. I want to specify first serve. So yeah, Felix has an elite first serve. And... Uh, because he's a good mover, he's athletic, he's not that tall. I do think that uh, people don't look at him like that. People don't see him that way. But if you look a little closer, it's apparent. So uh, I agree with that. Berrettini's backhand, his two-hander, underrated? No, no, disagree, disagree. I don't think it's steady. I think if you if you hit into it, here's the thing, like, he doesn't do damage on it at all because there's a stiffness to it where he doesn't generate pace uh, because it's just a stiff shot. And because it's a shot that doesn't generate pace, it would be good if it never missed, if it was very, very consistent. But I don't think it's that. I think it's a shot that doesn't do a lot of damage and isn't all that consistent either. It's another shot that I think misses into the net a lot. He doesn't miss long very much. The reason we see Berrettini better on clay is because he has more time to run around and hit forehands. The reason we see Berrettini have more success on grass is because his backhand slice is very effective and he doesn't need to hit over it as much. Hardcourt... I feel like neither of these things are true, and that's where Berrettini's backhand is most vulnerable. But yeah, I don't agree that it's underrated. I think it is a bona fide weakness. However, uh, I will say this. One more thing on, on the Berrettini backhand. People who say that's the only thing wrong, that's the only reason why he's not in the elite tier, I also think that's not fair. Because Berrettini has less mobility than pretty much any elite player, meaning he's he's slower. So that that's another big problem. You know, to say that his backhand is the only thing that holds it him back, and to blame that shot, like si single it out as the reason why Berrettini is not elite, that's wrong. So if people are doing that, then in that in that way, Berrettini's backhand is underrated. From uh, Arshit, Berrettini, is that how to pronounce? Uh, probably not. Suresh, I'll go with the last name, Suresh. Uh, Berrettini's forehand. Feel like we're always talking about the serve, but in my opinion, it's the most versatile non-big three ground stroke in the game. It works well on all surfaces, and he can hit it with flat, power, spin, angles, and feel. Berrettini's forehand from the middle of the court from a stationary position, from the middle of the court, especially when he has an attackable incoming ball, is probably the best in the world. Probably the best in the world. Nadal is the other contender. But middle of the court, plenty of time, attackable incoming ball, Forehand for my life. Let's take the next shot out of it. Let's say it has to be a winner. Forehand for your life. It has to be a winner. If you make those the parameters, I'm going to go Mateo. Is it underrated? Everybody knows it's great, but it certainly deserves a whole lot of appreciation. From Caleb, 
Haven't seen him in a while, but Kay Nishikori's backhand. I believe I remember Darren Cahill saying that he liked Nishikori's backhand better than Djokovic's. His two-handed backhand was as smooth and clean as anyone who has played the game. Aesthetically speaking, like the technique, I agree. Like that to me is actually the prettiest two-hander I've ever seen. And you throw in the footwork that K brings to the table on it as well. How comfortable he is um, hitting it from various positions. Uh, yeah, it really is gorgeous. And I think I, I'm i surprised Cahill said that. And I'd like to hear him revisit that because it's not better than Djokovic's backhand. I think I'm pretty confident in saying that. Uh, but it's a... Uh, it's a lot spinnier. Like he Nishikori for a two-hander gets way more revolutions than than most. Um, it's not like a spinny backhand to the point of being slow and loopy, um, like Casper Ruud's backhand. It's not like that. But he's got a very very nice. Um, he's got a very nice trajectory. Hits great. Uh, great shape on it. He gets that dipping, that biting action, that uh, cliffhanger effect where a shot, it's not hit loopy, but it's hit straight and then it dives. And that's because he's got just really, he gets great rotation on his two-hander where uh, a lot of players, including Djokovic, they hit that two-hander a little bit more flat than K does. So it is, it's just a beautiful two-hander. There, there seems to be great safety and uh, it, it can also be a shot that is precise, very accurate. And for his size, I mean, how many two-handed backhands at his at Nishikori's size are as big as K's? So uh, I, I like that choice. Tal, tal, tala, tala. This was the top-liked comment. From current players, I would have to go with Cam Norrie's backhand. Everyone treats it as a huge liability due to it not looking good aesthetically. However, he can change direction, increase depth, and place it well quite regularly. He was also using it to great effect at this year's Wimbledon, and it looked like a weapon on its own. From older players, there may be better choices, but one that sticks out with uh, for me, is David Ferrer inside-out forehand. Saw it on the Legends Tour, and it just reminded me of how ridiculously good it used to be in his prime. People knew it was a weapon back then, but severely underestimated how dangerous it really was. Yes and yes. Cam Norrie's backhand, I think it is incredibly bothersome for his opponents. And... I know it doesn't look like other people's backhands and it's it's unconventional but uh the way the way it stays low and the way cam the way cam places it especially short in the court cross court you know when he goes cross court short angle sometimes you can't move laterally to the ball or it'll bounce twice in front of you. That's that's how the depth of that shot is effective. Am I making sense here? The ball stays so short and low that not only do you have to move off the court, but you have to move inside the court. And then, of course, low contact points. Like, I, I think when we're talking about underrated, that's just an underrated attribute altogether. The players who are, are able to kind of bring those flat backhands to the table, which I've seen more and more, honestly, in recent years, especially players who do it and uh, like to kind of take pace off the ball and and kind of redirect and keep it low and slow. Um, it, it's just a very underrated attribute of a shot to just be able to keep it low. Uh, it's very hard to attack when a, when a ball is staying as low as 
uh, a shot like Cam Norrie's backhand does. So yeah, Cam Norrie's backhand is underrated because I do think that uh, some people think it's a weakness, and I don't think so. I don't think so. Ferrer's inside-out forehand. Ferrer's forehand was often the biggest weapon on the court. That was not a rare occurrence. So when people say that David Ferrer got to number three in the world without any offensive weapons, I, I'm never into that. I'm never on board with that assessment. His forehand was the weapon here. And yes, particularly his inside-out forehand. It was a shot that he timed so incredibly well. So he always found that short angle on the inside-out forehand when he wanted to add, you know, extra risk and, and make it kind of extra attacking. And in addition to that, how many players were quicker to their left to find a forehand than David Ferrer? Federer was very quick. Nadal was very quick. I don't, I'm just stuck in the past tense here for all these people, so don't don't read into that. Um, Ferrer is right there. Like he, it was so hard to get it to his backhand because his feet were so darn quick. So uh, I love it. Ferrer's inside out forehand, underrated weapon, true. Chinmay, Rafa's new flattened backhand, the kind of power he's hitting it uh, with has made it a very lethal weapon, unlike the 2010s where it was more of a way to get to, to the forehand. Just look at the Australian Open final. Nadal was hammering with his backhand in the last three sets. Yeah, I definitely think this is true. I also don't know that it's underrated at this point. It, it has been a development in the recent years of Rafa's career that he's been more willing to flatten out and hit out on the backhand. And yes, maybe the general public hasn't quite caught up to how good Nadal's backhand is. But when you are a member of the big three, it is quite difficult for anything about your game to really be underrated. Um, and, and I know that Djokovic's serve, I said, yeah, maybe, but these guys are just put under a microscope to a certain extent that, that does make it very hard for anything to be underrated. On that note, Bruno Alves says, Rafa forehand drop shot better than Alcaraz's? No, I don't think so. Because, you know, the drop shot, it's a, it's something where if you do it less, it's most effective. So for Alcaraz to do it as frequently as he does, particularly in some matches, and maintain the success with it that he has on such a consistent and regular basis, I haven't really seen Rafa do that. Uh, now, Rafa has unbelievable shot selection on his forehand drop shot. It's like he never pulls it out when he shouldn't have. He always feels his court position, his opponent's court position, the incoming ball, so meticulously well that when he does hit it, and, and God, he executes it, it well, um, as well, and uh, he can do it on the forehand, where obviously you have the threat of the big forehand pushing opponents back. Uh, it is a fantastic weapon, and I can't say enough about it, uh, but I would not give it the edge over Carlos Alcaraz's, given the frequency that Carlos is able to pull it out. From Philip, Sinner's return of serve. I think Sinner is already in the same tier as Djokovic, Nadal, Medvedev, Zverev on the return. I would like to stew on that one. Let's give it some more time. At Wimbledon, I certainly uh, see where you're coming from. Um, I, I, and then obviously in Umag, the same thing. I, I do want to see probably a little bit more, but I'm kind of with you on this one. I think that Sinner's return of serve for this moment, this very moment in time, might be slightly underrated as the pub, the general public is just a little bit behind on how good it is and how good it can be. Um, I mean, man, both uh, the first serve 
from a defensive standpoint and the ability to absorb pace and the aggressive second serve returning are uh, are really both very much on point. And it's hard to to say um, if you're serving to Yannick Sinner if you should go to the forehand or if you should go to the backhand because they are really, really even. From Alex, I think slices are underrated in general because they don't look impressive from the main TV angle. Specifically, I think Nadal's backhand slice is underrated. Nadal's backhand slice, it's good. There are There's better out there. Um... But, but it is good. It's hard for him as a lefty, though, because I think if uh, when he slices cross court, sometimes I think he knifes it better. The problem is that's to the righty forehand. So if he wasn't a, a lefty, um, you know, when he slices down the line, it it's just uh, it floats. It can float a little bit like he, he doesn't knife it quite as well. Uh, but usually it's tactical and it really it gets the job done right in in a matchup such as, I don't know, let's say he's playing Daniil Medvedev, he wants to get it low and short to Medvedev's backhand uh, to, to set up the forehand. I mean, it's a very effective shot. Are slices underrated in general? I will say this. For young players, I, I think so. Because uh, if, if coaches and juniors aren't training the slice... I think it's absolute malpractice. Absolute malpractice. Now, first of all, uh, it's a fantastic option to have um, to manage low contact points, for one. Like, that's one of the ways where I think slice, and, you know, slice is most often used, is just the ball got really low and you have a two-handed backhand. And just because of the, the biomechanics, it's easier to reach the ball if you take a hand off. Not to mention um, the the way the ball stays low, the way it changes the pace of the rally, the way it can bother your opponents, and the consistency that most players with a good slice is uh, is able to kind of develop on on that shot. It's very important. But more than anything, if you train the slice, your backhand volley is going to be better. Your backhand drop shot is going to be better. Your block return is going to be better. Your defensive slicing is going to be better when you can't possibly get your left hand on the racket and you're completely stretched out. So when you're training the backhand slice and you're developing that as a shot, if you're a young player, if you're a coach, it's not just about the backhand slice. It's about getting more comfortable with all of the shots that go along with the backhand slice. Backhands with the continental grip is basically what I'm saying here. Uh, and you should develop a great feel for that and great technique. And uh, I, I think it's... It's just terrible. It's terrible. When players come up and they don't have that in their repertoire. So in that way, I think, yes, it's underrated. From Leanne. Tomich forehand, when attacking, it absorbs the power of the coming ball so well. And I'm not with you. I'm not with you on that. I think that a prerequisite of an underrated forehand is you must be able to generate your own pace as well. However, the unique abilities that Bernard Tomic possesses and his skill set are certainly on display on the forehand side as they are elsewhere. I'll leave it at that. Uh, from Roberto, Tsitsipas's smash. So much confidence on that shot. I agree. Tsitsipas has a fantastic smash. And not only is he very sure of himself on any kind of routine attacking smash where he gets to camp under it and, you know, maybe have a cup of coffee and then hit it, right? He's very good in, the, in those situations, don't get me wrong. But he is so athletic and tall that I find his ability... To, to retreat and move quickly backwards and hit difficult overheads. Uh, also, uh, phenomenal. So, if I'm talking about some of the most difficult players to lob, Titipas is right up there for me. And because the overhead is a, 
a rather rare shot, it is susceptible to being underrated because we, we don't see it as much as some other shots. So I, I do believe that Tsitsipas' smash may indeed be underrated. And that will do it. 15 underrated shots, although some of you left multiple, in which case it was multiple. Um, this was fun. I like this. We'll do overrated shots at some point. Uh, but but next up will be uh, a preview of the National Bank Open for the Masters 1000 tournament in Canada. So make sure to keep your eyes peeled out for that one. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.